This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's have a first look at Palm E, which is an embodied multi-model language model from Google Research, uh, Robotics at Google and TU Berlin. So what is this particular Palm E? It is a multi-model language model. Previously, I have covered Microsoft Cosmos. Now Palm E is from Google. So the idea is you have a large language model to which you can give different inputs like images. It could be embeddings from other modalities like robot sensors, right? Interleaved with the text, it can actually give you a text output which can then be fed to a robot. Okay. So the idea is given some embedding over here and an image. Uh, the question is how to grasp a blue block, right? And the answer is actually first grasp yellow block. Okay. So given um, embeddings of the sensors, basically a state over here, right? And this image, it asks how to grasp blue block and the model actually gives the output in language, which can be then converted to control signals. This model, this large language model can also be used for visual question answering, captioning, right? It can be also used for language only tasks. Describe the following image basically. Given an image, um, this comes under captioning, uh, but under language only tasks, it is like, okay, uh, here is a haiku about embo uh, embodied language models and then you can, um, you know, have the model complete the text or it could be question answering, right? This model can also do mobile manipulation. So the human says, bring me rice chips from the drawer. Um, robot one, go to the drawers, open top drawer. Okay. I see. And then uh, the image, basically this image. Uh, this is the output from the model which says, pick the green rice chip bag from the drawer and place it on the counter. Okay. This is a task and motion planning where in this table, right, uh, it is about how to grasp the blue block. So for that, you need to first take the yellow block, right? So first grasp yellow block and place it on the tab table, then grasp the blue block. Then there is tabletop manipulation where in on a tabletop, there are some objects and you need to say here, sort given this image, sort colors into corners. Then the model gives the output in steps, push the green star to the bottom left, push the green circle to the green star. Okay. That is how it does this tabletop manipulation. So various tasks are converted into a language only output basically over here by giving different kinds of inputs in the form of embeddings to this large language model. This concept is similar to what I have explained in Microsoft Cosmos one. There also we had a multi um, model, large language model, which was taking embeddings from say different uh, things like images or audios and text. Here also it is the same thing. Okay. So I, the concept is similar. That's what I have realized over here. Okay. So what, what they say is that PAMI transfers knowledge from visual language domains into embodied reasoning from robot planning in environments with complex dynamics and physical constraints to answering questions about the observable world. PAMI operates on multimodal sentences where you have a sequence of tokens where inputs from, uh, you know, arbitrary modalities. It could be images, it could be neural 3D representation or states. Okay. Inserted alongside text tokens. That is what they say over here. Basically these green and blue colors are multimodal inputs. Orange ones are your text into a large language model, which has been trained end to end. So that is a concept over here. They also have a project page where they have a lot of uh, demos basically uh, on, you know, how this uh, model performs a certain task. Okay. So for example, this is that example of bring me the rice chips from the drawer. It has multiple planning steps and, uh, you know, incorporating visual feedback from the robot's camera, right? Uh, there is also another example for uh, bring me the green star. Okay. So these are example videos of how they have uh, done it basically. How the model gives certain outputs and based on that it works out. Okay. Here how to sort the blocks by 
colors into the corners. That's the idea over here. So it first tries to push green to the one corner, then blue to the other corner. Yellow is anyhow in that corner and red is in another corner, right? So when, again, if green is pushed over here, you can see that, that it pushes back. Now red is kept over here, it tries to push red back, right? So this is the two examples of generalization. Instruction is push red blocks to the coffee cup. This is another example where it has to push the red blocks to the coffee cup. Okay, push green blocks to the turtle. So this is the red block and there is another example over here. Okay. So there are other examples of uh, different use cases. For example, given this image, it is about can I go down the street on a bicycle, yes or no. So here, if you look at this image, there is this except. So it says that uh, basically bicycles cannot enter over here. Let's think step by step. So do not enter is there, except bicycles, do not enter except bicycles, so yes. So uh, can I go down this street on a bicycle that's a question over here so this image says do not enter except emergency and vehicle so bicycles can enter this street that is what is the inference over here okay uh, let's look at some other example over here let's see what is this example given this image who are the two teams playing in this photo which was the last to win a championship which year they did win Okay, team in white is New York Nick, uh, green is Boston Celtic, last to win championship was Boston Celtic, year was 2008, okay. Five star player was Paul Pierce. Uh, I'm not sure if this is correct, I'm not a basketball fan, I just Google it. So this is the response from the model given this image. So basically this is the input, okay, to the model. So many such examples are there over here, you can go and check out. Uh, let's just quickly look into you know how this uh, model was trained here are some more examples of uh, you know visual condition jokes plus few short prompting zero shot multimodal chain of thought this is the example which i talked about right uh, physical prediction okay given this image what will the robot do next whether it will fall or this thing okay so it says fall interesting ocr free math reasoning okay so today's special some pizzas prices are there Okay, I'm getting just two custom fees for me and my friend. How much should I pay in total? So it calculates that first step, two custom pizzas. Then it goes over here, create your own pizza price. It calculates and it gives out this thing. So it also has multi-model chain of thought reasoning. Okay, this seems to be very similar to uh, your Microsoft Sonos as well. That was a 1.6 billion parameter model. This is actually a 562 billion parameter model. Okay. So you have various uh, Palm E models also over here. Uh, okay. I think I saw one example of uh, the different sizes of models. Maybe let's quickly look at it. Uh, where is that? I had seen somewhere about, uh, yeah. So there is Palm E 12 billion, Palm E 84 billion. Okay. And uh, yeah, the 564 billion model. There's also Palm E 66 billion model also. Okay, parameter models. Now let's quickly look at how they have, uh, you know, uh, what kind of features are extracted from various uh, inputs. So the idea is from each uh, input, you basically have uh, your, uh, what do you call, uh, representations are converted into embeddings. Okay, for example, for robots, you have something called state vectors. So from a robot or state estimate for objects are simplest input to Palmi. So vector is mapped into a certain language embedding space. Okay. Um, so uh, the state can contain pose, size, color of those objects basically. For images, vision, vision transformer is converted into, uh, you know, uh, it maps an image into number of token embeddings. And that is uh, therefore converted into some kind of uh, using an affine transformation or something. It is converted into an input to the language model. Okay. I think that's what is explained over here. Yeah. For object centric representations, unlike language, visual input is not pre structured into meaningful entities and relationships. VIT may capture semantics. The structure representation resembles a static grid rather than collection of object instances. 
we therefore also ex explore structured encoders that aim to uh, separate visual inputs into distinct objects before giving them into llm so we given ground truth object instance mask they can be decomposed into vit representation that is the idea over here okay uh, then for object scenes you have object scene representation transformer mm, okay so they make use of that uh, because it doesn't rely on ground truth segmentations okay and they convert that with an mlp i think mlp stands for multiple i'm um, sorry multi layer perceptron basically to convert uh, yeah the object representations into an embedding same with state estimation vectors over here okay for entity referrals for embodied planning tasks pami must be able to reference objects in its generated plan uh, okay however there are also exist settings where objects are not easily identifiable by a few words for object centric representation we label the multimodal tokens correspond to an object in the input prompt as okay uh, with special tokens objj so that is how they mark over here object one is this okay right so these are the different inputs which can be given into uh, pami and what is the uh, main model behind palm so they have used uh, pami so they have used palm as their transformer model okay large language transfer model uh, as the base model uh, the difference is that the inputs can consist of text and multiple continuous observations it could be multimodal sentences okay a multimodal sentence example is this what happened between there is an image and image 2 where image i represents an embedding of the image that is the input format the output of fami is text which has been generated so i find this very similar to the cosmos model because over there also you had uh, some kind of uh, uh, image uh, embeddings coming uh, which has been converted into a language model kind of this thing that they used clip or something so here they have used the vit or vision transformer okay so that looks quite uh, similar um, so it is a decoder only yeah uh, so the palm model is a decoder only large language model which tries to predict text given some input so that is the these things mm, pre-trained model can be conditioned on a prefix okay so you can basically use prompt to fine tune the models mm, what is token embedding space uh, is discrete finite um, okay token embedding space but here we need to actually map the multi-model things into this token embedding space uh, we train an encoder that maps a continuous observation space into a sequence of q many vectors in x these vectors are then interleaved with normal embedded text tokens basically that is how uh, to form the prefix for the large language model okay okay so this is about uh, how you are actually mapping this particular multiple multi-model uh, vectors into this sentence okay so how uh, okay palm in a robot control loop okay the palm is a generative model producing text based on this input okay to connect to this thing we distinguish two cases if the task can be accomplished by outputting text only embodied question answering on then the output of the model is directly considered solution okay it is used to solve a robot control task it generates text that conditions low level commands okay in particular we assume to have access to policies that can perform low level skills from small vocabulary and a successful plan from palmy must consist a sequence of such skills uh, palmy must determine on its own which skills are available based on the training data and prompt and no other mechanism is used to constrain so this is basically about uh, how do you do the robot manipulation and other tasks so what they say over here is that this model is capable of generating low level steps for that during training it needs to be aware of what is this low level steps and you know how it needs to perform that with certain prompts that is what they've explained over here okay so this was a high level uh, about palm e i am not really going into other things over here uh, so probably you can read through this paper to understand more about uh, you know the other uh, tasks uh, and uh, the details okay 
So they have given some examples of Palmy guiding a real uh, robot through one shot and zero shot table top manipulation tasks. Uh, this was the rice uh, chip basically go to the drawers, open the top drawer, take the rice chips out of the drawer. Human knocks the rice chips back into the drawer. So this is some kind of adversarial dis uh, disturbance, but still it tries to take the rice chip out of the drawer, bring it to the user, put it down. This is the other example of moving the green uh, object, right? So some examples are present over here. Mm. Uh, let's go to the appendix and see where they have actually explained about, uh, okay, again, the same thing wrong. Uh, so this talks about, this table talks about the data set which they have used uh, to, uh, you know, train this particular large language model. So they have used also something about this uh, robot manipulation, uh, some data sets uh, from their data sets, they have used this. Okay. So these are the environment test samples. Uh, this is for objects basically for that robot manipulation. Okay. So where you give example prompts like this, given an image and a target basically. Okay. Okay. So uh, task and motion planning that is TAMP. The training scenes for TAMP environment contain Three to five cube shape objects of different size, colors, and sampled initial poses. So that is this particular example. Okay. And then this is actually treated as uh, uh, VQ, visual question answering tasks. Okay. So given this image, is the red object left, right, or center of the table? Okay. The red object is center. This is, this is how uh, the TAMP data set looks like, which stands for task and motion planning. These are your other uh, question answering data sets, visual question answering data sets. Okay. What else is there? Uh, these are actually basically success rate on this particular environments. Okay. For these particular tasks compared to other models. Okay. Mm. I'm just trying to see success rates so for different input representations. Okay. Not other models basically over here. Then this is for your uh, language generation and understanding tasks, the performance of various palm uh, E models. Okay. And here is the comparison between palm 540 billion parameters and palm E 562 billion parameters. So if you look at that, yeah, for some tasks, Palm is better. For some tasks, Palm EB is better. That's what is shown over here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll be putting a link to this paper as well as this site. You can go and look over here and try to understand more about this particular paper. It's quite interesting. Uh, but this is a huge model, 546 uh, billion parameters, 546 or 564 which is this actually 562 billion parameter model. Okay. Whereas uh, Cosmos one from Microsoft was 1.6 billion parameter models. Yeah. So you can go and check out this particular paper. I hope this video is useful for you. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. See you in another video.